Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernardo from the BTN HD, and yes, oh my god, um, super excited because it's episode 10 with our MDT 2013 and uh, deploying Windows 10. As you know, MDT 2013 released a new update, Update 1 Preview, which is uh, supposed to support Windows 10 deployment. At my website, uh, I will place the link at the bottom of the description so you guys can go check out. We done episode one through nine. The last episode was all about creating a media boot within MDT 2013 update one. And I show you guys how to burn it into a USB drive. And we actually deployed an operating system with our um, USB on a physical machine. So that's cool. Uh, today's episode is all about Windows deployment services, which is the way I love deploying my Windows operating systems to machines on our network or my network or hopefully your network so let's get started so i'm going to close this up and i'm going to launch my virtual machine and first things first i'm going to minimize this and let's get into our server manager and i'm going to make that a little big and we need to go into manage we need to add a role or a feature click next uh, it is a role based or feature based installation. We're going to click on next on next. Uh, I'm going to select the default, which is the actual machine with my MDT. Uh, I like to install my WDS services on the actual MDT server. Uh, a lot of people might not like to do that because it's not best practice, probably. But if, if you have uh, enough physical machines to deploy physical services, go for it. You can actually create a virtual machine to house the WDS. So that's like less resources that your MDT will deal with. But hey, for this series, I'm doing everything in one box. So we're gonna click on next on this one. And on the first page on the server rows, we want to check Windows deployment services. It's gonna ask, do you want such and such? Yes, we want all the features. Let's add all the features. We are going to click next. We don't need to add any features or anything. We're going to click on next. Uh, WDS, we're going to click on next on this. I do need the deployment server and the transport server. I normally leave those by default. By default, actually, it's already selected, so don't touch this. I'm going to click on next on that. Uh, if you want, you can restart the destination server automatically if required. Uh, I don't think your I don't think the installation of WDS needs to be restarted, but if you want, Hey, go for it. Let's click on install. Uh, this process shouldn't take you too long. And once it's up and running, we're going to configure our WDS node to talk to our uh, MDT server. And we're going to test it out and deploy our first um, operating system with WDS. Okay, so installation succeeded with no problem. Excellent. I'm not going to reboot the machine uh, because I don't think you really need to reboot it at all. Uh, I'm going to close this up and I am going to click on my start and off the back there's the WDS. I'm going to right click on that because I want to pin it to my taskbar and let's go back to our desktop and let's click on our WDS services dialog box. There it goes. Let's expand that beautiful thing. Uh, by default, this is what you have. Your Windows deployment server is not configured so I'm going to right click on it and we're going to configure the server for the first time. It's basic to say uh, before you begin, ensure the following requirements are met. You gotta make sure that these requirements are met, that you have an active DNS server, uh, that the server has an NTFS file system partition and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna click on next. And now this is really up to you. You can either integrate it with your active directory. The server is a member of the active directory domain services, ADDS domain, or a domain controller from the ADDS. I normally like to do this one. This is pretty new with the new upcoming operating system. I believe this actually was uh, done on Windows 2008 R2. Uh, you, could actually, you could do a standalone server, configure the server so that it is standalone operating independently of active directory. I'm gonna pick the first one because that's what I like to do. Uh, we're gonna click on next. By default, it's going to drop everything in the C drive, but I do recommend this on putting it into another partition. Uh, don't leave it on your root, but for this series, I did everything on the C drive, so let's click on next. Uh, the volume selector is also a Windows system volume for the best performance. As I told you, it's best that you could move this into another partition, but I don't have another partition, so I'm going to leave it as is. So let's click yes. Now, this is really up to you. Uh, do not respond to any client's computers. You really don't want that because it, when you pixie boot over the network, 
your machines are gonna not going to talk to your WDS, and that's not a good thing. Uh, respond only to known client computers. This is a little bit more tedious and a little bit more work. If you just want to just hit F12 and let it work smoothly, do that. Uh, actually, don't do that because this is going to cost more work because that means you have to authenticate each computer that hits the WDS server. The one that you want so you don't have to work, just press F12, is respond to all client computers, known and unknown, right? Uh, if you are running a tight ship in your infrastructure, I would say do response only to client computers. Hey, you probably need to authenticate each one that hits the WDS and say, okay, I approve this one and this one and this one to push out the image. It's really up to you, but it's not going to be one of those things that you uh, set it and forget it, and then you come back and set up. It's gonna You're going to set it, and then if you don't approve it, it's just going to be there until you approve it, and it's just going to take more time. So I'm going to pick response to all client computers. And I'm going to click on next. And it's copying all the files that it needs. How awesome is that? And once it starts the WDS services, I think we're almost done. Actually, now we're not done. We're going to configure it to talk to our MDT. And then we're good to go. Now, uh, it wants you to add an image to the server now. I'm not going to click on that. So I'm going to uncheck it and click on finish. When that play button is green, that means it's a good thing. So let's go inside our boot images and we're gonna right click on it. We're gonna add a boot image. Now the file location that you want is, you already have a file uh, location and it's inside your uh, deployment share. And I believe it's inside the boot. There you go. So inside the boot folder, you have your 64 and your 86 win. I'm gonna do this 86 first and we're gonna click on next. I'm gonna leave the default name as is, but you can change it if you want. Click on next and click on next and let it let it do its thing. Let it add it into our deployment service. Okay, so the selected image was successfully added to the server. Awesome. Now you, all you have to do is the same thing with the 64 bit. So let's right click on the boot image folder again, add a boot image, browse. It's going to automatically go to that boot folder because that's the last place that you guys were in. Click on 64 when open next, next, and next, and just let it be. Okay, so the 64-bit WIM, uh, select the image that we've done was successfully added to our service, so we're going to click on finish, so there it goes. Again, you could change the image name as you if you want. Both of them are online, great. Uh, one is bigger than the other one, that kind of makes sense. Uh, the date that we actually imported it, the version OS, which is Windows 10, how awesome is that? Uh, what I like to do when I import any boot images I, or replace them, I like to right click on the primary node of our WDS and just go to all tasks and I like to restart it. Uh, I've, I've had cases before that if you don't restart the services, it won't work or it won't take the changes that you made. Or sometimes when you restart, something bad happens and it doesn't restart. So that means something's going on, you got to troubleshoot it behind the scenes. So it looks like it successfully restarted. Awesome, so we're gonna press okay on that. All right guys, so the next thing that we need to do is test our WDS installation and our boot images that we created. So let's create a new virtual machine. Let's go to file, new virtual machine, next, next. We're pushing out a 64-bit operating system. Uh, let's give it a name. I'm gonna go to a bj-temp and I'm gonna drop it inside my uh, VM folder. Let's create a new VM folder called bj dash temp okay next I'm gonna give it a 30 size 30 gigs of size next I think that's enough and we are gonna power our virtual machine and I'm gonna click inside our virtual machine and press F12 so I can pixie boot there it goes awesome F12 and as you can see we see our 86 and 64 awesome and it's also talking to our server which is a great thing and let's double check that this is our MDT slash WDS server, so let's do it. Windows R, CMD, and IP config, 188, awesome, so it does match. So this virtual machine is talking to our WDS slash MDT server. So we're gonna pick on the 64-bit one, and it's gonna load all the files to uh, start the deployment. All right, guys, it looks like our MDT uh, deployment wants us to run the deployment wizard to install a new operating system, so let's click on that. Uh, it wants us to use our uh, credentials, so let's click on, uh, let's type in administrator. You're probably not going to get this because you uh, set up this information within the custom settings INI file. And let's provide the password. Let me enter the password so I can get into my deployments. 
and this is the domain excellent and let's press OK awesome so let's pick our task sequence our image and we're gonna click on next and uh, we're gonna give it a uh, computer name computer name. let's give it a computer name of BJ dash temp a bunch of stuff is being skipped because that's what we did on our custom settings i9 file and I do want my Silver Firefox to be installed and it is deploying awesome how cool is that let's go back inside our MDT server let's exit out of this command prompt and let's go inside our WDS and as you can see remember we enabled the monitoring parts in it and BJ temp is running it's on 49% let's go back into our MDT and it's on 1% so it's running it looks like it's working with no problem awesome super excited it's gonna take about 13 minutes for the operating system to complete hopefully you guys enjoy leave comments right below uh, pretty soon I'm gonna continue the play series because I got more to go with the sequel and other little little things that I want to show you guys to complete the MDT uh, 2013 update one preview with Windows 10 uh, playlist and I'll catch you guys on the next one peace out